So now Donald Trump has his surrogates going on TV saying that the very fact that presidential debates are taking place is comical, that there shouldn't be any debates, that it's unfair, that it's going to be rigged. Donald Trump is sending Lara Trump to go on these shows and to whine about it. Look, as we predicted, as we get closer to the debate between President Biden and Donald Trump, Trump and his crew are going to ratchet up the whining, ratchet up the excuses. So either Donald Trump will pull out of the debate or when Donald Trump loses, they'll blame it on something and come up with some excuse. Oh, President Biden must have been on drugs. Oh, President Biden rigged it. Oh, it was the gag order. Oh, CNN was unfair to Donald Trump. Oh, people were mean to him. Take a look at this. Lara Trump went on Newsmax and they were talking about how the very existence of debates, it's comical, it shouldn't happen, it's unfair that it's gonna be on CNN, they say. It is 24 seven whining with these people. Take a look. I mean, they, they are so fully in the Biden camp that it's it's almost comical that we even have debates like this in this country that it's it's just it's it's unbelievable um i mean it'd be like it'd be like sean hannity moderating one uh, on the other side you know i mean that that that's really what it is laura Which trump we'll thank take. you so much we would do we would do that one rob yeah <laughs> yeah sure you would thank you very much <laughs> then donald trump has his non lawyer MAGA legal expert tom fitton by the way a little bit of a looser shirt it looks like from this interview He's saying that Donald Trump should have appealed his conviction to the Supreme Court, which really isn't a thing that could happen. And then Fitton says it is unfair for Donald Trump to debate while a gag order remains in place. And by the way, that's what I said. One of the excuses was gonna be Donald Trump whining that the gag order makes it impossible for him to debate. Here he sends his surrogate, Tom Fitton, to go on right-wing media to whine about that, play the clip. Oh, I think they should have taken it to the Supreme Court yesterday. I don't think they should wait for J July 11th. I mean, it's abuse on top of abuse. I mean, we're facing the prospect of, of President Biden being held hostage to Judge Merchant and the campaign being held hostage. Uh, it's bad enough it's happening now during the campaign, but literally during a debate with Biden, he's gonna be attacked on this, he's being attacked right now, and under this gag order, he can't fully defend himself. Then on Fox, you have Laura Ingraham uh, talk about how, and this is such an interesting one, because, you know, Fox and right-wing media are all there pushing that this, this is all about weaponization of the Justice Department. This is what Republicans should be focused on, but it's clear that one all of their conspiracies are just utterly deranged and are just ridiculous lies and are false. And that the American people are focused on things like democracy, are focused on things like Donald Trump's attempt to overthrow free and fair elections, Donald Trump and MAGA's efforts to take away women's reproductive rights and take away our freedom. So here Laura Ingraham says that Trump should not talk about January 6th. Trump should not talk about weaponization and Trump should not talk about his legal cases during the debate and just how they have to baby him and like try to coach him because they know all he does is watch the shows. But notice that they don't want him to talk about all the things that he and they have been talking about. Here, play the clip. F. And by the same token, though, if at the end of the debate, a lot of time was spent on the 2020 election, January 6th, or Judge Mershon, Alvin Bragg, Fonnie Willis. Uh, with Trump at all sounding defensive or angry, I think Democrats at least will consider that a significant win for them. Remember, they know Biden's weak. And, and this is not to say the weaponization of government is not a huge issue, it is a big issue. But it's not what's driving voters to the polls. So I'd just quickly dispense with that. I could see Tapper maybe asking Trump something like, sir, as a convicted felon, uh, there's a possibility that you may be sentenced to prison and face multiple other cases down the road. How does that make you fit for the presidency, sir? Well, know that this type of question is gonna be asked and do one thing. Well, don't get Trump to, you know, try to get Trump to lose his cool. That's why that question is being asked. Again, Trump doesn't need to take the bait. Now, on their convicted felon point, I'd simply say, well, Jake, most 
people see these cases as driven by politics and they know that I decided not to run for office again, none of them would have been brought. But setting that aside, we believe we have a strong appeal in the New York case and we expect to win that appeal. Then earlier in the day on Fox, you had Brian Kilmeade and Brian Kilmeade then did the work of trying to normalize some of the oddest and strangest stuff that Donald Trump does every single day. Like when Donald Trump has the fake conversations with uh, Hannibal Lecter and he talks about his friend Hannibal Lecter or when Trump talks about getting eaten by sharks or being electrocuted. And what Brian Kilmeade says here is that, look, this is, this is Trump at his best, okay? Trump is kidding around. He's having fun. He's not losing it. This is what political humor is. And again, just think about how desperate Fox is that they are trying to just like coach Donald Trump and baby him and try to act like this is normal here. Play this clip. People are talking about how Trump's losing it because Joe Biden's losing it too. Trump's kidding around. He's having fun. He's kicking it back, talking about Hannibal Lecter. He's looking in the audience. He's playing around. And now people are going, Trump is losing it. No, he's having fun. Right. And, and that's where he was picked up. One Nation. Yes, folks, the cope is real. The cope is real. Hey, I'll be back to that report in just a second. But while I have you, I want to bring more attention to a topic I know the Midas Mighty has been asking. We talk more about, and that's the climate. Now, I know you've already heard plenty about Project 2025 and the threat it poses to American democracy, but have you heard about Project 2025's threat to the planet? And do you wonder why Trump keeps telling those bizarre stories like this at his rallies to try to turn people against electric vehicles? Here, play the clip. Do I get electrocuted if the boat is sinking, water goes over the battery, the boat is sinking? Do I stay on top of the boat and get electrocuted? Or do I jump over by the shark and not get electrocuted? Look, Project 2025, led by the Heritage Foundation and Trump allies, aims to undo President Biden's climate and clean energy achievements. You know, I'm a data person, and unsurprisingly, when you actually look at the data, you quickly see that it's heavily backed by big oil. Of the 105 groups in Project 2025, nearly two-thirds have ties to the oil and gas industry, with over half receiving funding from it. Since 2020, these groups have received more than $50 million, with $7 million in 2022 alone. Key funders include the Sarah Skay Foundation, contributing nearly $17 million, and the Koch Family Network, adding over $26 million. You literally have oil and gas industry lobbyists writing these plans in Project 2025. Look, we can't allow the progress we've all made to be rolled back, so I thought it was important to share this with you and that you share it with others. It's important we keep this conversation about the climate going. We'll continue to follow the money and, as always, follow the data. Now let's get back to our report. Thanks for watching that. And while all of that's happening too, you have Sean Hannity also basically telling on himself in this clip. And here he says that the problem with CNN, he goes, they're fake hosts, they're fake news. They're like North Korea style propaganda and they're state sponsored TV. They're trying to help President Biden no matter what. Like he's quite literally talking about himself right here, but just watch what they're saying on Fox, play this clip. All right, we are only eight days away from the first presidential debate, and I think it is past time for the moderators, you know, fake Jake Tapper on fake news CNN, fake Dana Bash, uh, to get their network in check. Because right now, we are witnessing North Korea levels of nothing but outright propaganda. And as you can see, they're not doing journalism. They lie, they say they're journalists. No, they're not. They're state-run media. They're certainly not holding truth to power. Hour. The state-run media is simply repeating White House talking points, all in what is a desperate attempt to defend their chosen candidate. Take a look. Then you have Hannity and Lara Trump from the other day, pre-spinning Donald Trump's bad debate showing by Trump, uh, by, by accusing President Biden of being on drugs. Here, play the clip. The former president, you know, 
took on the challenge. I don't think he'll regret it. However, the Joe Biden that we're talking about tonight, I don't think will be the Joe Biden we're going to see on debate night. I think the Joe Biden we see on debate night is going to be the guy that we saw at the State of the Union. He's going to be all hyped up. Caf, you know, hyper caffeinated, whatever it is. It's in interesting that 70% of the country does like the idea of drug testing. I like the idea. Uh, they do it to athletes. They do it to horses and horse racing. Why not do it to presidential candidates? I like the idea. 70% uh, of Americans apparently agree with me. However, what do you expect for the debate? Yeah, well, this is nothing new, of course. The cards have always been stacked against Donald Trump since the day he came down the escalator to announce he was running for president as a Republican. Look then you have Lara Trump already calling the debates rigged. Play this clip. Well, I, I think you're correct, but you know what we've always also called for and what Donald Trump has said is that he wants more debates. So he said, yes, I'll do this one in June. I'll do the one in September. I'll do the one in October, but let's do one in July. Let's do one in August. Let's do one every single month leading up to this election. Cause Sean, we need these two men on a stage. We need to be very clear about the direction we want this country to go. We need to hear from Donald Trump about his vision for the future of this country, how he will give this country back to the people, how he'll fix the mess Joe Biden has put us in. And Joe Biden has a lot of questions to answer. So we want to see more of them on a stage, not less. And you're right. It's rigged so heavily in Joe Biden's favor, but everything always is. You've got Hollywood against Donald Trump. You've got the music industry against Donald Trump. Mainstream media, despite that, and even the judicial system at this point, he is beating Joe Biden in every poll out there. It's amazing to see. So if Joe Biden shows up on June 27th and doesn't come up with an excuse yeah. like he has to wash his hair or something, I have full confidence that Donald Trump will outperform him. Then you have Donald Trump's spokesperson, Caroline Levitt, saying what Trump's really gonna do here is just is bring that optimism. That's what he's gonna do, Bring uh, play the clip. He's gonna bring his optimism that he's been bringing to the campaign trail over the last several months. That's why- Well, anyway, let me know what you think. Hit subscribe. You think he's gonna show up for the debate? You think he's not gonna show up for the debate? He's He's down in the polls now, so now that he's down in the polls, does that make him more likely to show up at the debate, less likely to show up at the debate? Let me know. Tell me what you think in the comments. I want to read them. Hit subscribe. We're on our way to 3 million subscribers. Thanks to your support. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day. Enough! Send it to the big house, not the White House. Get the new exclusive tees, mugs, and stickers right now at store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.